What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Glees on Life. I'm Alex Glees and today we're doing a little bit of mushroom foraging. If you watched one of my recent videos, we actually did a little bit of foraging and we didn't really find much of anything. But we have been getting some good rain recently here in North Carolina where I live and things have finally started waking up. So hopefully we'll get into some things today. I'll take you guys along uh, with me on this trip. What I'm hoping to find is mostly Boletus separans, which is the lilac bolete, which is an extremely tasty wild edible. So hopefully we can find some of those and I'll show you a couple of the other things that we find. So stick around and let's see what we can get into. All right, so getting into some of our first mushrooms here. So you can maybe see here, we've got some boletes. I'm not gonna pick too many of these, but I'm mostly just gonna do it to show you guys. You can identify boletes from this sponge or pore-like surface. So one of the things that you can actually do with these to make sure that they're actually good to eat is actually to take a little taste of it. And wh what I mean by that is actually that you need to take a little bite of it, put it in your mouth and then spit it out. Because there are a lot of these mushrooms, um, boletes that are actually quite bitter and not something that you actually want to eat. I already know that this one is one of the bitter um, Tylopolis species. I believe that this one is the, oh gosh, I can't remember. This one is known to be extremely bitter. So I've got my bowl eat here. Um, you can see that this one is kind of purple-ish. Yeah, I'm not excited about tasting this one, but I'm gonna do it just to show you guys how it's done. You just take a small piece of it like this, nothing crazy, and then you're just gonna put it in your mouth and spit it right out after you've tasted what it kind of tastes like. Yeah, so I was right, this one is extremely bitter, but now we know that we don't wanna take this one home. So if we see any that look like this one, we're just gonna leave them be. So when I'm looking for mushrooms, I'm walking along here and I'm just sort of scanning up in here so you can maybe see some of the ones that I'm seeing right now, like these ones right here. I'm not gonna give those ones a taste because those are gonna be bitter. I already know they're one of the bitter Tylopolis species um, with these smooth caps. Here in North Carolina in the summer, we get a ton of boletes, like an insane amount. Um, so no shortage on boletes. This one here, uh, I think this is also just a Tylopolis. I'm not an expert in boletes. I know the ones that are good to eat. I know how to identify those. And these ones here are not the ones that I know. So we're just gonna leave them be. What I'm walking through right now is mostly conifer trees, which is not really what I want to be looking in because the lilac bolete, bolita separans, does not grow under conifer trees. It grows under mixed hardwoods. So we need to get a move on and get to a spot that actually has mixed hardwoods so we can start finding something that we actually want. Here's a not a not a bolete, but a uh, I don't know if it's a, a russula or a lactarius species. It has uh, gills on the underside, which boletes, they do not. They have a sponge surface. So yeah, we need to get to some more hardwood uh, forest and get out of this conifer forest. Check this big sucker out. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if this is the Pleurotus dryanus 
or Levi's. It kind of doesn't really look like either of those because it doesn't have like the shaggy sort of edge on it. Um, eh, fun to kind of jiggle it. <laughs> I like the way you jiggle, jiggle. It folds. I like to see you wiggle, wiggle for sure. Or whatever. Nice thick mushroom. Um, even if it is the pleurotus, it's not something I want to eat. Not that great for eating. But it's still a pretty cool mushroom either way. Now here we have a really fun mushroom. This right here is the shaggy stalked bolete. Uh, I don't remember the scientific name on it. But I'll go ahead and pick it here just to show you guys one. So you can probably see why it gets its name. It has this extreme reticulation on the stipe, which gives it this shaggy appearance. Um, has really deep yellow pores, which is a good indicator of the shaggy stalk. Uh, this cap, when it's younger, can be kind of sticky. So this one is kind of a mature specimen. But these are actually edible. And they're surprisingly good. They actually have like a little bit of a citrus taste. So how I prepare them is I usually take this cap off. Um, either cut it or just rip it off. Decapitate it. And then you're going to want to peel this shaggy part off. That should come off pretty easily like with the back of your knife or something. Um, and then you want to use the stock. You can cut it up. I just made a chutney with it the other day. Some people like to eat it with just like steaming it or cooking it lightly and eating it with other vegetables. It's a really fun one to find. I don't think that you can find it in many places outside of North Carolina and the Piedmont region. But if you can, let me know down below if you've ever found it before. Um, if not, hopefully you guys can actually try and find this. I'm not going to collect any of these today because I already collected hundreds of these for my own use. But I just wanted to show this one to you guys anyways. I just found another shaggy stalk. I'll show it to you guys. It's a pretty thick one. You can see the cap is about as big as the palm of my hand. That's pretty good size for these. They don't usually uh, get much bigger than this, I would say. So that's a pretty, pretty good one. Okay, now we're starting to get into some woods that look a little bit more like what we want to be looking in. Uh, a bit more hardwood. We have some, what I believe are oak trees and some, some beech trees and stuff. Just a little bit of mixed hardwood that should be a lot better for what we're looking for. And already I know this spot has mushrooms. Because there we got some mushrooms. These are not what we're looking for. Uh, these are, again, maybe some of the blue staining ones or the bitter ones. This little guy caught my eye actually though. So let's see here. Oh yeah, this one actually might be pretty good. So what you can see there is it has a pretty heavy reticulation up there at the top. And then it has these really nice tight white pores. Uh, so I'm going to give this one a taste and see if this is actually something that I want to eat. All right, so just a small little nibble on it. I think that this is going to be not bitter though. Mm -hmm. Always make sure you spit it out, even if it tastes good. Just because it'll upset your stomach, even if it is something that's edible and non-toxic. Um, but this is actually a nice, dense little bowl eat that is something that we want to take home. So I'll go ahead and trim the bottom off on this and put it in a basket. So a little bit of bugs on the inside here. These are larva tunnels, but uh, you're not really going to find many bowl eats that don't have that. So this one, it's pretty minimal. So if that upsets you, then you probably shouldn't go mushroom foraging. But you can hear this one is nice and dense, which means it doesn't have very many larvae in it. So this one's coming home with me. So here's another mushroom. 
that might be something good. Let's pull them up here and let's see. Ah, uh, nah, he's staying in blue. Not that the blue ones, not that you can't eat them. Actually, the ones I found in my last video, um, which I'll leave linked here. Um, you could actually eat those. They actually had a really strong, almost like broth or curry odor to them. They were actually a really cool mushroom. Um, but yeah, uh, some of them you can eat, some of them you can't. Those are the ones that are gonna really upset your stomach. And I'm not an expert in those. So for the most part, I tend to leave those ones that stain blue. So the reason that I am out looking in hardwood forest and not conifer forest is because bull eats, and specifically the ones that we're out after today, are actually what's called mycorrhizal. Pop that on screen for you guys there so that you can uh, see how that's spelled. But essentially that means that they grow in association with certain trees. For those of you that don't know how mushrooms actually grow, mushrooms are actually the fruit of the actual organism. So the mycelium is the actual organism which is underground so you can't really see it unless you kind of dig around um, but you don't want to disturb the mycelium too much but usually it's like this white fibrous looking network it can be yellow sometimes too it's different depending on the mushroom species but that actually is what is the organism and the mushrooms just grow off of that organism so it's actually pretty neat that we have sort of like a whole network of mycelium growing underneath of us where we're walking it's pretty cool if you want to do some more research on your own about that and check it out i know that some fun things are actually that the trees can communicate with each other through the mycelium network uh, or mycelial network which is pretty neat i'm not an expert again i'm not a mycologist i'm just a guy who likes to go out and find things to eat outside but it's still pretty uh, cool nonetheless. Here we go. Here's some mushrooms. Some fun stuff. We got a nice little flush of bull leeks. And then we got a, a couple of amanitas over there. Oh, actually a pretty good flush of them all the way over there. As well as some shaggy stalks over there. Shaggy stalk bull leet. Actually quite a number of them. Holy cow. Uh, so this looks like it's a good mushroom spot. Might have to stay here a little while. Yeah, there's more bull leads here. Still not the ones we're out after. Um, let's look at one of these for fun. I think I know what this one's gonna look like. I think it has red pores on the underside. Yep. So there you see, this one's got bright red pores. But now this mushroom here is actually something that's edible so I'll pull one of them up here so this one here specifically is Amanita Jacksonii I believe I'm not gonna get too much into all the nuanced details of this it's an Amanita in the section Caesarea you can eat Amanitas in the section Caesarea and the most identifying feature for them is this cup-like vulva down here at the base of the mushroom. They kind of emerge from this little egg. And I know that this is Jacksonii specifically, I believe, I'm not an expert, but it has this sort of like orange-yellow netting on it, which is a pretty good indicator of the Jacksonii, and a little bit of remnants of what's called a partial veil kind of like a skirt um, or veil that covers the gills of the mushroom so you can actually eat these ones if you find a mushroom that looks like this that doesn't have this cup or vulva down at the bottom right which can easily be removed like this it's actually going to be something that you don't want to eat um, other amanitas are toxic and actually fatally toxic so i wouldn't recommend this mushroom for a beginner Though this mushroom can actually be eaten raw, which is pretty rare for wild mushrooms. 
but again not for a beginner and not something we're gonna mess with today maybe I'll do an episode on these sometime in the future let me know down in the comments if that's something that you guys would be interested in seeing us eat so the mushroom that we're out looking for which is again Boletus separans or the lilac bolete is actually pretty or can be pretty difficult to find especially when they're young because they have this sort of like dark kind of brown red burgundy i guess you could call it cap um, which has these like wrinkles in it so it makes them really difficult to spot because they kind of blend in with the leaf litter so in in their prime stage when they're nice and young and dense they're really hard to see unless you're in a spot that's like where they're growing in grass or something but they will fade as they age they get this like gold cap to them um, sometimes brown but they they will continue to have that sort of like wrinkled look on them and the stipe on them is really what's going to give them away usually almost tripped there and it's going to have this like beautiful deep reticulation um, that's usually kind of like a pink color or like a, almost a lilac color and the cap again too can kind of have a lilac color which is why they're called the lilac bowly i'm really hoping that we find some so that i can show you guys but we haven't uh haven't gotten lucky yet but we'll keep trying all right i think we finally found what we're looking for these right here are boletus separans and these ones aren't maybe the greatest specimens to show you guys the uh reticulation on the stipe but i'll try my best anyways we'll grab this fella here hopefully you guys can see this it should have this really deep uh pink reticulation on it you can see on this side here that this guy's actually really pink which is why they call them the lilac bolete really really tasty mushroom this is like one of the best things that you're gonna find out in the woods like hands down like people love morels or whatever and black trumpets and chanterelles but i would take these all day over any of those mushrooms so check this guy out here this is a fun one. So this is the frost bolete or ex oh my god, I forget the scientific name. Something exudatorius, something frosty eye, something like that. So this is actually one that has red pores on it that you can actually eat. So they actually have like a uh, kind of like a sour candy apple taste. So they're actually a pretty fun mushroom and it's actually a super cool looking mushroom. Red cap, red stipe with that massive reticulation on it, and red pores. Sometimes they have like a, a honeydew kind of droplets on the underside when they're really young. But yeah, you can actually eat this. So we might uh, eat this guy when we get home. And just as I turn off the camera, I find another separans. This one is a pretty good little one. Trim him up. Yeah, so that's another nice one. Let's see, there's really bull eats everywhere here. No, that's not one. Um, I wanna look in this area here since I haven't been over this way yet. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, I think we, we might have, oh, those might all be good older ones oh yeah i think that this is a good spot so all these ones here are really really good this one is amazing on the reticulation wow check this one out i don't know if you guys can see that or not but this one has some amazing reticulation as well as these ones wow 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 this right here is exactly what we are out after you can see the beautiful reticulation on these ones. Absolutely amazing. So then you can also see on these, 
they have those like slightly wrinkled caps. The cracking comes with age. And then they, uh, the browning or yellowing of the caps also comes with age and lack of, uh, or more, more exposure to sunlight or lack thereof. But yeah, so they actually change a little bit throughout their life cycle. Now these are not them, but I think, yeah, there's some older ones here. Yeah, that one's too old. But something here about this, maybe this dead tree here, this dead, I think, oak tree, is uh, causing these fungus to to flourish here. So I'm gonna keep keep checking the spot a little bit and see if we can find some more good ones. Oh, this is one here. Let's see here. Oh, it's just the cap. Something snapped this off already. You can see this one's really dark brown, uh, but this is a good one too. The cap will do. Just the cap. Oh, there's the, the stipe of it just laying around. I'll bring that home too, why not? I don't know what it is about this spot, but there's several frost bullies here. A nice little flush of them. This is actually my first year even finding these. Yeah, this one's a little old, but so to find them in a, in a little cluster like this, that's pretty cool. Something about this spot is really causing the mushrooms to come up because bullied here, bullied here, some over there. Yeah, really, really good spot. Guys, I will say I was not expecting to find this many mushrooms. Today, this is incredible. Beauty. Nice. All right, you guys, I think that we've got enough mushrooms here to uh, take home and do something with. So I will see you guys back in the kitchen. So I was uh, sitting down and editing the video and I didn't realize just how many mushrooms we actually found. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't leave out any of the good parts for you guys. But the video ended up being a lot longer than I thought it was going to. So I'm actually going to split this video up into two parts. So the cooking will be its own separate video, which I'll post in a few days. So make sure that you guys are subscribed if you're not already. That way you guys won't miss that upload. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed accompanying me on the forage and I'll catch you guys in the next video when we cook up those mushrooms.